Years of time have come and gone since I first heard it told how Jesus will come again someday. If back then it seemed so real, then I can't help but feel how much closer his coming is today. Signs of the time are everywhere, and there's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eye upon the eastern sky. Greetings and salutations in the name of the Most High God. To all my family members, my friends, my friends of friends, Christians, Catholics, all seed of Abraham, Muslims, Jews, Hebrew Israelites, Hebrews, non-believers, and pathfinders. Welcome to another Signalman broadcast. I am Daniel Signalman. And in this show, it's about pointing the world to the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus Christ and his eminent return. Identifying, showing, pointing, telling about the signs that show his coming is near. And that we all need to be prepared for his eminent return. All revenue collected from this podcast goes to relieve uh, people in Huntsville, Alabama, for relief in people in the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and Trinidad. That's a synopsis of who we are. Today, our lesson is still coming out of the book of Daniel. And as you can see, I have a real live image back here behind me. Yes, I took the time out and I put myself all based on the information found in Daniel chapter two. Now, here is some something I want to point out about Daniel chapter 2. After God reveals the information, and you'll have to go back to the podcast, to the other videos to see where I'm coming from, but after he reveals this information to Daniel, Daniel goes before the king, and he talks about the dream first. First thing that happens in the dream is that I saw the image, image of gold, right? You can see the head is of gold. Maybe I'm pointing it. Head was of gold. Chest was silver, right? The next thing was the bronze, legs of iron, and feet of part iron, part clay. And of course, my little rock over here, right? That's made without human hands. Oh my goodness, it fell on me. Maybe I need to bring it a little closer, right? Let's see if we can get this. Uh, turned a little bit more so that everybody could see it. All right. Yeah, right there. Right about there. All right. So, right there. All right. So, we have the little rock down here in the corner coming across to hit the image. That's what you're seeing. Okay? Daniel describes this to King Nebuchadnezzar. In his interpretation of this, he says, God has made King Nebuchadnezzar ruler over everything. He has put people, lands, country, animals into his hands. 
He says, thou art the head of gold. So King Nebuchadnezzar starts off the whole section of this image. He is the head of gold. That's one thing that is clear in Daniel chapter 2, one of many things. All right, so I'm going to put this down since it fell on my head. All right. So immediately what is recognized, or at least what I can see, is this. The God of heaven, according to Daniel's account, wanted the heathen king, King Nebuchadnezzar, to know what was going to come up in the years, months ahead. This is very similar to what happened to Joseph in Egypt. If you recall, he was in Egypt. The king had a bad dream. They pull him out of prison. He goes in front of the king. He says, God gives interpretation. He interprets the two dreams. They promote Daniel. I mean, they promote Joseph to second in command the only person he had to uh, uh, pay attention to or, or, or bow the knee to was the, was the Pharaoh. Go and check it out. Genesis something. The ending chapters in Genesis. All right. In this particular situation, something similar happens. Here comes Daniel again. He tells the king, hey, the God of heaven wanted you to know this. What I find very interesting is that even in captivity, God was still speaking to his people. His people who had ignored him and followed other gods and provoked him to wrath, he was still giving them information, still providing them hope, still telling them in multiple ways, and you can find this in Jeremiah and different other books in the Old Testament, that he loved them. And he wanted them to know certain information. So he provides Daniel with the, 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 the dream and the interpretation. In addition to that, he wants not just to save or demonstrate his love for Israel, but demonstrate his love for the entire world. He speaks to the head of the then world. Or, or, or at that particular time, the empire, which was the Babylonian empire, and says, hey, this is what's going to happen in the future. From all accounts, this is, this is Nebuchadnezzar's first one-on-one -on -one with God. And God uses a light, one of his lesser lights, to shine upon Nebuchadnezzar and tell him about the God of heaven. All of us who claim to love God, or be obedient to Jehovah, all of us who accept the Bible as his word, who believes in the almighty God, we're supposed to show forth his glory. Jesus says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel. Right? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Wherever we are planted, wherever we are transplanted, wherever we move to, whatever position we get in, in at work, or we change positions, we're supposed to, not just in what we read, but how we speak, how we conduct ourselves, emulate God. Kind, loving, empathetic, considerate of others. All the, the, the characteristics that we call the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to demonstrate that. This is King Nebuchadnezzar's first encounter with God. Now, we're only going to talk about the head of gold today, but we'll get deeper into it and we'll get to the end.
At the end, though, King Nebuchadnezzar falls on his face and worships the God of heaven because of what Daniel did in chapter 1, because of what Daniel did way before he got to Babylon, because Daniel and his friends purposed in their heart. They were able to be a blessing to the Babylonian emperor. You and I have the opportunity to be blessings to all around us in our apartment complexes, in our condos, in our neighborhoods, in our at work, wherever we are found. This is our calling. This is what we are required to do to represent the kingdom of heaven as sons and daughters, crown prince and crown princesses of the almighty God and the soon to return king. There was a grand total of five spots. One, two, three, head of gold, chest of silver, uh, the belly and whatnot is, is of bronze, legs of iron, feet of clay. God wanted his people, the heathen king, the entire world to know what was happening in the future. This image is important to us even today. As we wait for the prophetic information of this image to unfold, we all must still do our part. If you know information that will help somebody improve their life, that they need a, a closer relationship with God, if they will allow you to pray with them, you should. If you see your neighbor struggling to cut the grass, help them out. If you see a neighbor or a friend or somebody, not even a friend, but strangers, hey, she has five girls and they need their hair braided and you have the ability to braid it, braid it for free. Don't charge that mother, that family might be struggling to begin with. Whatever you can do to alleviate the stresses of a human being, let us go forward and demonstrate that. Let us go forward and behave in the manner in which we are called to do. All right, before I leave, I like to end with this particular uh, verse of scripture, all right? Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Share what you learn one-on-one -on -one when you commune with God. Share your resources if it's going to improve somebody else's life. If you have education and you have the ability to read, share that information, especially when it comes to Jesus. Share his love and his soon return. Don't be greedy. Jesus is coming back. Share the information.